Hello and welcome to the Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast. Uh, my name is Grace, I'm your host today and you can find me on Instagram as Vanna Willemiel and Babbles Yarns, mostly on Vanna Willemiel, that's my main account um, where I post pretty much everything. I post um, details on Babbles Yarns if I have a shop update or if I'm going to an event. So if you want to perhaps maybe select one to follow if you're interested in meeting me or getting some of my yarn, Babbles Yarns if you want to put a notification on that. I don't like do very, like every day, you won't get sick of me. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, who am I? I am an Irish girl living in Ireland. This is Mr. Beans. I just caught him as he was traveling along. He is my little kitty and I love him and he wants to go out. But I'm like, no, you know what Beans, no. He was sleeping so nicely on my lap there when I was sitting on the couch, but he doesn't seem to want to sleep on my lap anymore in my craft room. <laughs> Whatever, Beans. I don't care. I'm going to leave the door open so he can come in or out if he pleases. Because I love him. He's so cute. There he is. Now, uh, so it is Sunday the... something 25th or 6th of August. Oh my gosh. Summer holidays are over. Not that I have summer holidays anymore. I don't go to school or anything. I'm I'm a full-time working girl. Uh, I work in a hospital. I am a radiographer. I take x-rays. I save lives in general. I'm pretty amazing. And in between x-rays, I knit <laughs> and I spin and I weave as well. So this podcast is all about my crafty endeavours and places I go, uh, places that crafts takes me really. I'm also a big, uh, I say a big part, I'm also on the committee for the Irish Guild of Weavers, Spinners and Dyers because I do all those things <laughs> and it's a lovely guild to be part of. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on. Uh, the next really cool thing happening is the Cork Craft Guild, uh, or sorry, the Cork Craft Show, sorry, a lot of the guilds are going to be um, in a section of the guild, in the section of the show, um, a room, a, a kind of a textiles room, and we're going to be doing demonstrations. I'm going to be there pretty much all day Saturday, I'm leaving at about, I'm starting, I'm setting up and then I'm there until about three o'clock, so if you want to come see me, maybe some see some of my fibre and some of my yarn, I will be bringing some of it. If you um, are interested, you can pop along and yeah, so that's that's part of it. That's going to be fun. I'm going to be demonstrating some spinning and weaving, uh, not not dyeing because it's not a wet room. So, um, but I am going to be doing some demonstrating of some spinning and some weaving. Um, yeah, I haven't figured out what I'm going to put on the loom for that. I was thinking about making a little weaving band, like a belt, an Inca loom. We'll see. Um, yeah, so, right, that's part of, that's my part of my events talk that I was going to talk about. I don't really have many more events coming up. There is a, um, Oh, an International Spin in Public Day on the 15th of September. It's the third, third Saturday of September. And all around the world, there's loads of spinning in public days. So if you want to have a look, uh, there's a spinning in public uh, uh, Facebook page where a lot of these events are located. Um, also, the Guild is having at least three, hopefully four events all through, our, all through Ireland. Um, there's one in Glore in Ennis. Um, and that is running from 12 until 4, I think, 3 or 4 on the Saturday, the 15th of September. And then there's one down in Skibbereen Market and that's Eve Chambers Textiles is hosting that. She has her stall there and she's going to be spinning with her spinning wheel. So if you want to pop along and join her, that's going on in Skibbereen in County Cork. And there's also an event up outside the... Um, Museum of Country Life up in Castle Bar in Mayo. So it's really spread around this year, which is really fun. We are looking for a venue uh, in Dublin and we will get back to you um, 
our, our normal venue is unavailable because there's a class on that day. So hopefully we'll be able to organise something in Dublin uh, and that'd be great. Hopefully we'll have nice weather for it too. That'd be lovely. So that's really exciting. International Spin in Public Day is when uh, the, the kind of um, Midwest spinners in, in Glore started, uh, which was a really, really lovely journey for me and uh, a lot of the other spinners that I met. It was really, really nice. And we started our monthly meetings then in Glore after that last year. So long may it continue. And I hope all these other events um, will maybe continue as well because uh, they're just really lovely events, skill sharing and make such good friends and it's great. So if you happen to be close to a uh, spin in public event anywhere near you, there's plenty all over America, Canada, the UK. Um, I'm sure there is a down in Australia, New Zealand as well. Um, because they have a, a large spinning um, um, spinning and weaving um, community that I know of anyway um, because I was part of some of that when I was down in Sydney. So yeah, it's going to be fun. So that's what's happening in September. I'm restricting myself to two events in September. I know that's very restrict that's very restrained of me. <laughs> Um, because I'm also going on holidays with my family. There's a big family holiday coming up. Um, it is my mum's, uh, it's a big birthday for my mum. She's just retired from 42 years of nursing. Can you believe it? She looks like she's about 35, so hopefully I get those genetics. Whoop. Uh, <laughs> and all of us are coming home, so it's going to be great fun. I am going to be off the radar. I'm not going to be online. I'm going to just take the time for me and my family. So that's going to be so exciting. And then after that, in October, there's my retreat. Yay! So the retreat is going to be on Bank Holiday Weekend in October, which is the 26th, 27th, 28th of October, kind of the weekend before Halloween. So yeah, that's going to be exciting too. I'm going to be having a open day and I have a number of local Irish dyers, local people who are working in Ireland, creating pro creating um, lots of beautiful um, woolly crafts, project bags, um, yarn and ha some hand spun. Uh, hopefully it's going to be there as well. We're gonna have some spinners down and that's going to be super fun. I am going to hopefully um, rent a few extra looms from the guild and people can have a proper go at weaving if they want as well. Um, so you are at, like there is an open day it's free to attend the market's going to be at 12 o'clock on Saturday the 27th of October and you're more than welcome to attend it's going to be lovely you can spend the whole day if you want there's food and uh, tea and coffees and drinks available at the bar and it's just a lovely space to be with lots of lovely knitters, really relaxed atmosphere. And uh, even if it's raining, it's beautiful inside the, the lounge room and also in the bar, there's like a fire and um, some classical mu or classic Irish music and stuff. So please do uh, think about it if you are interested. So, how exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, so I suppose let's talk a little bit about my knit. So I have one knit finished. You will not have seen this unless you've been following me on Instagram, which I've been talking about it quite a lot. I can't believe how fast this was. So my friend Aileen, um, Little Bush Baby on Instagram, contact, well, put up a call and said, um, oh, this, uh, this girl, Rachel, is looking for test knitters. I don't have time, but I'd love to, if, if anyone is able to, um, you know, kind of, do this test knit for her and uh, that'd be great and I said oh me I'll do it because uh, I watched her podcast and I just fell in love with her she's adorbs like I love her love her so she has the crafty historian podcast on YouTube and she's got about 20 episodes I think but she's still quite a small following so it's really quite lovely um so she is this girl who is a historian and she is studying in the University of York. She's starting her master's in September. So to help out with starting her master's and uh, help out with the move and college is so expensive and stuff. So she's actually designed and released this pattern. So this pattern is a hat. This is her first ever pattern, by the way. Ah! So this pattern is the White Rose of York 
and it's a top down hat so you cast on at the top I don't know if you can see this you cast on at the top and then you follow the chart all the way out and the increases are included in the um, the rose pattern so this is um, oh it's so cute it looked a bit like a circus tent when I was making it because all the, the the pearl it's it's a really simple just pearl um, pearl and knit pattern so it's kind of like Guernsey style, um, but it's so effective. But when I was knitting it, it looked a bit like a circus tent because it all kind of pulled in up here. <laughs> or boob. <laughs> but I absolutely love it. So this is the crown. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I got through this crown. It was addictive. I got through this crown in about one night, I think. I came home at about five, had dinner, sat down, started knitting at about six. And I was done this by 10 o'clock. I went to bed. I couldn't believe it. I was done all the way out to here. And then uh, there's a stockinette portion and then the little border, which is really cute. I managed to mess up on my count, as usual. And there's a, I did a twisted, twisted rib stitch really because I really like it but I think it might have stretched out a little bit too much I'm not sure um I knit this on the recommended needle size because I got gauge uh at 2.75 millimeter double pointed needles or circular needles so it's knit with um uh, Eden Cottage Yarns uh in her I think it's oak work Oakworth four ply and it's her Poleworth base in the Whispering Grass colorway. So it's this kind of tan uh, sand sandy color. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I really wanted a light color so that I could properly show off this colorway, uh, the contrast there. Isn't that lovely? Really wanted that. And also, I haven't woven in the ends. <laughs> now. What I recommended to uh, Rachel was to um, just uh, maybe state not to do a stretchy bind off. The hat is big enough. Um, uh, I did a stretchy bind off because I always do because I'm always paranoid that, that's, that I'm too big, which is my own body image. It's whatever. I know I'm, I, I probably am not, but in my head, I always think that I am. But anyway, so a stretchy bind off is not necessary. I'm going to leave it as it is actually. But if you want it uh, to feel a little bit more secure, um, I think we're going to recommend a, just a normal bind off, not a non stretchy bind off. So yeah, it's so cute. And then the pictures that she has taken, I think she has just done a normal bind off and it looks like it's staying on a little bit easier. But I've been wearing this all morning and it's not slipped off. Yeah, it's fine. Unless I probably bend down sideways. Okay, if I bend back, it falls off. <laughs> so I don't normally wear slouchy hats, right? I really don't. I don't know, it kind of has this kind of um, hipstery connotation to me, which is really silly because it's so cute. And then you can see my hair is so cute. And if it's kind of slouched back, you don't get that weird glasses thing. Why didn't I realize this before? If you wear glasses, slouchy hats, way better. Like, why, why do we have these weird kind of ideas about people and you don't want to be seen as that type of person? But look at this cute little rose. It's so cute. Could you hear that? I was freaking out about how cute the rose was. And I'm so cute in it. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Grace. Um, yeah, so uh, she is Ravenclaw Rachel on Instagram. Lovely girl, so nice. Testinating for her was a blast. It was so nice. I was just chatting away to her on Instagram. It was lovely. I'm really glad. Aileen, thank you so much for putting me onto her because she's great. So I really would recommend you... Um, uh, support Rachel in moving back for her master's. Um, education is not cheap and I really think that uh, she deserves every every little single cent for this pattern. It's gorgeous. Just even like planning out this chart to make this rose. It's a five petal rose. Oh, let me explain the history. Okay. Oh, she's a historian, right? So she comes up with these amazing, you know, she knows this stuff. 
The symbol of the White Rose of York is typically associated with the War of the Roses, an English civil war fought in the 15th century. In actuality, the name of the civil war is retrospective, so that's what it was named after it actually happened. A part of Henry Tudor's propaganda to end the conflict, the Lancastrian Red Rose was never fought under, originating with the first Duke of York, Edmund Langley, Edward the Fourth. That's new Roman numerals. I had to think about that. And if, I, when I think I have to close this eye. Frequently used the red rose, the white rose, to consolidate his power and pro provide legitimacy to his rule. However, the symbol, symbol originated far earlier as a meditative, symmetrical emblem associated with religious contemplation. Completion, kind of like mandalas, I suppose. The color of the the association of the color white refers to the purity of the Virgin Mary and can often be found in de as decorations within illuminated manuscripts, such as the Bolton Book of Hours. How interesting! I love it. So, it is a five-petal rose. Actually, let me show you the actual. Uh, rose. She has it included in the pattern just for reference, which I really like. So, let me just... So, that is the White Rose of York. And this is how it looks on the hat. It's so, so cute. So cute. Oh, she has the key there. Nice. Um, yeah. So it was really, really fun to, to work with her. It was really nice. And that was such a satisfying knit. You know, I've got a couple of big projects on the go and I, I finished two things, yes, last week and I kind of was really on a finishing kick. But then of course I had said that I would do this. So I said, you know what? That will make me feel better. Fulfilling promises always makes me feel better. So, um, hey, and I get a hat. So that's sweet. So I'm going to wear it the whole time now because it's so cute. And it's starting to get cold again. Although September apparently I've heard that we're supposed to get an Indian summer, which means that in September it's going to get a little bit warmer again. Um, which is nice because winters can be very long. You know, I like all the seasons, but as long as they don't go on too long. And we have had a bit of a miserable August. Which, you know, the rain is always good, but, you know, I also like a little bit of sunshine. So, next whip. So this is my first FO, my only FO. And this is my next whip. And it's going to be with us for a long, long time. And I haven't managed to get up under the sleeves yet because I was knitting on this hat. But, um, yeah, I've got a couple more inches to go. This is my Doherty sweater. It's my Aran Doherty sweater for James, jumper for James, part of my epic along cal, which is a, a cal going for the whole year to conquer um, some of the large, impossible seeming projects that we may have been uh, putting off. So if you have finished or are currently slogging through a project that you started uh, after January 2015, no, 2018, huh? Um, you are entitled to ent an entry into the Epic Along thread and you can pop over to my Ravelry group which you can find down in the show notes below and um, have a look at all of the Epic Along. You can talk in the chatter, you can pop in there see and commiserate how you're getting on um, or if anyone has any suggestions for you or help and yeah it's just a lovely thread. All the people in there are the best of course. And uh, if you want to see the some beautiful, amazing, epic finishes, oh my goodness, pop in there. It's gorgeous. Actually, have you seen the front page of Ravelry this week? It's high yardage projects. Oh my god. That is so impressive. Mm, big time. So I am knitting this out of a uh, Aaron Sweater Market yarn. And this is a pattern that I am designing myself. Um, because I didn't like any of the Aran sweaters that I saw and then I put on a search on Ravelry to highlight and there's a ton of beautiful sweaters coming up now and I'm like hey where were you when I needed you? Obviously cable sweaters are in vogue. Bring back the cable! Every single person in Ireland had one of these by the way in the 1980s so 
and probably everywhere else as well it was a big fashion thing so this is my sweater we're getting there a couple more inches I think and I'm under the sleeves I I am gonna stick and add a few extra things under there under the arms I think if I do it now we'll see we'll see we'll see I've had a number of really excellent uh, suggestions for sleeves I haven't come down to a final decision yet so maybe that's what's also stalling me on this I just need to sit down and work it out but that's okay I'll get there yay now I have one more um hat obviously I'm on a hat kick hat kick now I want another one I'm going to tell you about that in a minute but this is a beautiful beautiful yarn by um the sixpence moon or the moon and sixpence annie down in cork in west cork it's this beautiful naturally dyed organic merino dk this is dyed with avocados and it is the squishiest beautiful it's non superwash so soft it's gorgeous 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 so this is um <laughs> just a big long twisted rib and obviously I stopped doing this when I started this. So this used to be a little cute antler toque, antler toque, damn it, I can't say it right, but, uh, by Tin Can Knits, um, but it was too small. So I ripped it out and I cast on the largest size. Note to everybody, apparently this is a thing with the antler hat that everything is too small. Just cast on a bigger size. Just so you know, that's apparently, it is known, but it was not known by me. <laughs> so I'm knitting a, a long brim, a double brim hat for myself. And we'll see, I might, these may end up being gift knits. Um, I am really enjoying these hats at the moment. There's also a gorgeous hat that, it has just been revealed, um was designed in pom pom issue 14 um it was it was uh the autumn issue or the winter issue big cables loads of big cables and it was actually designed by nessa from kiltercraft but she put it in as a pseudonym because with her job she wasn't able to be seen to be um designing uh, other patterns so nessa congratulations on your beautiful hat i want it i am going to find the name for you right now because i can't remember it off the top. so that was the oak crest hat and it's in issue 14 of pom pom mag and it was written it was um published under a pseudonym but it was nessa from beautiful kilt craft that um designed that hat so i desperately want to cast it on so yeah i'm in i'm just totally on a hat kick hat kick and i think it's just the the coming of autumn and the fact that they're so small and handy like they're and i do have a small but growing selection of um of DK weight yarn and I'm thinking oh there's a couple up there there's a beautiful hand spun green that I got from Kathy's Knits in Edinburgh that I'm thinking might be beautiful as an oak crest hat it's a lovely cable hat pattern it's got these elongated kind of diamonds with with kind of cables running through them it looks really pretty and it's got this little top knot on the top I love it mm. so um yeah that's next on my hat list once I finish this one off. But um, yeah, so I really do need to start thinking about the jumper though. But do you know for easy brainless knitting, we all need some of that, don't we? So I've, I have one, um, I have two more pairs of socks. I have my, um, my Peaky Cat socks, which I knit the heel on the second one and turns out it was way too small so I ripped it back and I haven't done anything on it since so I need to adjust my stitches and, and fiddle around with that and I just hadn't been doing haven't done that so that's okay so let's move on a bit now to spinning so you might have seen my most recent vlog which was on Craig and Owen and that was a spinning day down there and I actually did a ton of spinning on my um my grey 
my grey fibre fleece. It's a Romney Zvortbliss uh, cross and I've been spinning from the lock. And I think two or three episodes ago I show on the podcast I did a little demonstration about how I spun from the lock. And since then I've lost my little tiny flicker brush which is very annoying and I'm gonna have to buy another one. Arr, so annoying. Um, I think I brought it up to yarn folk and I think I might have left it somewhere. It must have got lost along the way. Maybe it's in Bernie's house. Bernie, is it in your house? I'm trying to think. We've, I've been trying to think, track where everything has gone, but hmm, I don't know. Anyway, so I saw some beautiful stuff being made. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I won't take my um, bobbin off my spinning wheel just because I want to just keep it on there and work away on it. But it's coming up this beautiful kind of grey caramel colour. So I really like that. So my plans for that is to make a big woven piece of fabric and then turn it into something either like a skirt or maybe another kimono style or maybe a, like a cloak for when we all go back in time to Outlander days or Game of Thrones days and I need a cloak. You never know. You never know when you need a cloak and they're so warm. In case you haven't seen, here's a picture of me in a cloak. Went on a Game of Thrones tour in Belfast. I have some footage, but I haven't um, edited it yet because it, unless you've seen Game of Thrones and you were there, it's a little bit tricky to kind of get the impact of where we were and try and see exactly where it was. There was a lot of zooming in to try and see the, because like, he had some acetates and stuff of showing us what the scenes were like and we we're like, oh yeah. But yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I, I need to go back over it and see uh, if I can make something sensible out of it, a short little video because it could get very boring very fast for people who um, maybe who have, who are fans of the show, but you still might not get the experience of actually going there. I really would recommend going on a Game of Thrones tour in Belfast or in uh, Dubrovnik, or I think they have them in Iceland as well. They're just really exciting and they're just wonderful. Like the, just the wizardry of, of filmmaking is just amazing. It's just amazing what they can do. So you can just be walking into this forest that looks just like a normal forest and then suddenly he shows you what they've done to this scene to actually make it this you know fantastic fight you know medieval style um scene you know that's amazing it's amazing anyway so that's where the cloak idea came from <laughs> i love it <laughs> um but yeah, um, and actually the guy that was the leading the tour actually recommended, because he actually did a lot of living history and Viking um, living, and he actually recommended a wonderful lady to me, Nancy Devlin. Now Nancy is a fantastic fibre artist, spinner, weaver, and kind of a natural dyer as well. And I've been talking to Nancy on Facebook ever since I was in, like um, the, the tour guide that in, told me about her and hopefully I'm going to go up to do an Inkle Loom class with her and um, I was just interested if anyone else in Ireland is interested in going and organising a little group up um, get in contact with me and let me know because I, there's at least two of us myself and Bernadine are going to hopefully go up uh, I think she's based I don't know exactly where she's kind of north she's in the north of the Republic of Ireland somewhere I can't remember exactly where. Anyway, so she's kind of the pale and the midlands <laughs> around that area. I can't remember the name uh, and I don't know it off the top of my head, but I can't wait to go up and um, do a little day course. Um, she said that you could totally organize and set up a little Inca loom um, or a little, um, I, I want to do some band weaving. I'm really interested in belt weaving or band weaving so interested she has an amazing selection of, of hand woven bands on her etsy shop as well if you're interested i'll put all the details down in the show notes i'm gonna write that down so i don't forget <laughs> nancy devlin etsy shop pop down into the show notes and find those and i will send them on to you okay 
So speaking of weaving, this is my next project. My gradient skeins, my gradient um, hand spun yarn. And I have some of this hand spun left over from my, um, let me show you. Uh, I have some of this black left over, sorry, this like dark blue left over from this. This is my kimono, which I am in love with and I wear all the time especially at events because it's great to be able to show people that I've made something from scratch not from scratch because I didn't dye the yarn but or I didn't dye the fiber but this is my kimono and I love it so much so I want to make something um, a little bit longer than this so I find that it, this is quite short it stops just there kind of at my at my belly so I wanted to go a little bit lower kind of down past my hips a little bit um, but that requires me to do a much longer warp. Um, now, for this, I used 200 grams. So I used 200 grams of this. I used around the same. So I need to figure out a way to, I think I need to spin some more. Hmm. I need to figure out a way to spread this out a little bit to do a little bit more I was thinking about maybe spinning a white maybe so this was done with a black warp and black at the back but maybe this could be a white in the center you know it, it could because um, I don't have as much white in that Oh, there's a lot of white in this. Mm, yeah, that'd be quite similar. Maybe darker on the edges. I'm not sure. I need to figure it out. I need to figure out what I'm going to be doing with that. But um, I was thinking about maybe doing the kimono or I got this book. This is the uh, woven styles for the 15 inch rigid heddle loom. So I have a 16 inch rigid heddle loom. So I'll be able to get a little bit more length on that. So this is by Tam Tamara Puff. Go beyond the rectangle, adding knitting, sewing or crochet. So there's a couple of really interesting um, tops in here. I really quite like this one. I love this and it's very simple, really simple. So there's a couple of interesting ones in this that I quite like. There's one which is, uh, I'm, not, I'm not super keen on the poncho style. Don't think I'm gonna go with a poncho thing. Um, not yet anyway. So she shows you how to go through, how to warp, how to weave, how to do all of that jazz. Hmm. This is quite cute. It's like this linen lace tunic. So it has this little lace part on top, which is quite nice. And the lace part on the back. And she shows you how they're all sewed together, which is okay. It's quite nice. You might think about that. Um, this, I'm not super sure about this. It has some darts in there, um, but the neckline is a bit funny and I definitely wouldn't use those buttons or the color, but um, you know, the idea is okay. I, I'm not sure I like that high-low thing at the back either. Hmm. Might suit some people, uh, but it involves a bit of like picking up and knitting like the, the, um, the sleeves, which I think is a lovely idea actually. This is quite nice. Now, I really do quite like this. So this is the sleeveless boat neck top. So it's essentially just two strips, one in the front, one in the back, and then you pick up stitches and you knit onto the sides. So nice. And I think what I would do is I might do a little scrunch down the front to just have a little look at the, you know, I'm not sure I would like this such so high up, but it might, it does look quite sassy. It looks quite nice. So that's an idea. And then you can do the long sleeve version, but that neckline looks really strange on that. So I might drop that down, uh, do something with that. I might just cut it in and do some bias binding or something. Look at me, it'll sound like I know what I'm talking about. The back looks lovely. The back looks really nice on that. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of different, oh, there's a poncho one. I'm like, nah, not really. A watercolor kimono okay so the kimono is interesting it's not kind of like the one I did 
um, they kind of leave these long tassels on the sides but then the back of it is still quite short um, and then this vest is quite cute I like the vest now uh, not that one this one yeah the tweed vest yeah I really like that and you know you could hold it in place with a uh, little pin annular pin the back is nice as well and then just accessories so scarves and bags and things so yeah this is the little um, rigid head loom bag and I'm thinking like I could totally adjust as I needed to I like the idea of I like the style of this you know um, I like the length of it and I like the sleeve so that might suit uh, the back gives you a little bit of uh, an interesting detail there I quite like that and that's just a pick up eye cord edge so that seems fine yeah so and she gives you tips for sewing you know placards together and yeah so um, I'm going to be doing something with these anyway we'll see how we go I just love these colors in case you haven't noticed <laughs> Oh, I also got this beautiful book for some more of my plant-based or kind of hardy wools. So this is Hand Woven Home and this is by Liz Gibson. Uh, so all the details are going to be just down below in the in the down bar about these books as well if you're interested. So you can just pop down there and uh, read a little bit more about it. So it's all specifically for rigid head looms. Um, so I really like the... Um, she gives you lots of different designs, uh, some designs for kitchen towels, uh, rugs, rag rugs at the bottom. They're quite good. Fabric stash rag rug. Genius. Uh, some more kitchen towels. Uh, fresh, break, fresh baked bread cloth. Some more just kitchen towels. <laughs> oh, I like these. So linen and lace kitchen curtains. I really like those. I love the idea of kitchen curtains. Um, they definitely want to be washable though because my kitchen curtains are currently a mess. Uh, so there's twill, how to do twill on the... Um, on the rigid head loom there's how to do fringed napkins so how to make it not like sew the edges down uh lux lin lin linen placemats Ooh, you learn how to do that little pattern design mm, cute you could do that with cotton as well i'd say definitely there's lots of runners Ooh, cushions now i really want to learn how to do cushions so look at this one, it's so cute. So this is a tweed and twill pattern. So it shows you, so you need a rigid head loom with two five dent rigid heddles and two stick shuttles and two pickup sticks. There's some stuff, I don't know, seems confusing a little bit. Hmm, I'll figure it out. I'm sure if you read through it, it'd be fine. <laughs> Oh, I love these little mug rugs. They're so cute. Shows you how to do those. And that's like a warp faced versus weft faced. Um, yeah. Bordering on perfect hand towels. Look at those borders. That's quite cute. You can make everything for the home. And then, yeah, she go, they go through the whole thing on how to do all of the, the, the funny kind of little techniques on there, on the rigid head loom. So this is a really, really lovely book for um, hopefully, you know, making my making my whole home hand woven. <laughs> I won't be weaving my own bed sheets anyway, that's definite. But <laughs> a few pillows here and there would be nice. Um, I wanted to do something with this piece 
which because so I do a lot of these like demonstration pieces and you know they're often just little scraps scrappy bits and I was thinking like I'm gonna head over to my friend Terry's house who's just releasing the most amazing little patchwork bags by the way my cottage number nine um, patchwork bags so cute But she invited me over to have a go at making maybe some bags or some um, pillowcases or something with these kind of um, kind of scrappy woven projects that I'm just bashing out at the demonstrations because they're so cute. But I don't want to know how many scarves do I need? I need to make something from this fabric. That's why I started getting into weaving. I wanted to, <coughs> excuse me. I wanted to actually start making something. So this is um, one of those pieces that hopefully will get turned into something interesting. Because you could definitely make a little bag out of that, you know, little bag, so cute. And then if I get into Inca loom weaving, I can really figure out how to make straps for the bags out of the same type of fabric, you know, so nice. Maybe I could just give it to Terry to make the bags. I'll make the fabric. She makes the bags. <laughs> little collaboration. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Hmm. Um, yeah, so another project which has just kind of landed on my doorstep, right, is I became completely obsessed with a particular fiber way color or colorway from Hello Yarn Club. Uh, Hello Yarn Fibre Club and it's Ships, Whales and Icebergs. So this was a limited edition American Blend Wool Top March 2013 colour. And this was what I spun out of it. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I did a, I need to look back over my podcast actually and figure out what I did for this because um, I can't remember exactly. I kept a, I should have labelled it, I kept a um, a sample of what the roving was like. I think I did a fractal. Yes, I think I did a fractal pla a fractal spun. Yes, and then I so I split it in half, and then I split it into lots of different little parts. Yeah. Anyway, so here's my plan. Someone got in contact with me because I basically I fell in love with this colorway. I put up a plea on the Hello Yarn um, Ravelry like fan group begging if anyone has any of this in their stash that they would be willing to part with. I would pay them for it. And I got this from that. And then I left it up because um, I thought, oh, great grand, that'll just fade down the fade down the feed. No one, you know, that's gone now. And someone got in contact with me recently, a girl in Norway. Thank you so much. And she had two of these and I was like, oh, 300 grams. I can weave something with 300 grams. So I got two more. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so they just arrived and they're still, if you see, they're still in the same, you know, in the same kind of um, uh, color sequence. So they were all, they were all, died in the same batch. Isn't that awesome? I just, lo I love these colours so much. So they were all dyed in the same batch, um, which just is so great. God, I love Ravelry. Yeah, so I am going to do a sort of a test. I had, uh, so this was the fractal ply uh, and then I had one bobbin left over. So I just, I just uh, two plied this just end to end. Um, so this is not going to be the same style, but um, I'm going to do a little sample of this with a couple of different colors for the weft. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the weft or maybe this will be the weft. I don't know, we'll see. But um, this is going to be another top another <clears throat> outfit because I love clothes. Yay. I was thinking about making maybe a skirt. Uh, this is, it's, I think it is an American, well, it's very bouncy. It's quite like, um, not soft, very hard, kind of bouncy, crispy, crunchy, not crunchy. It has a lot of bounce. It bounces back. I think there's some targi in this. It just says American wool. 
uh, blend, American Wool Blend. But I think there is some Targi in there, definitely, just by the feel of it. Like, it's a little, little bit bouncy, bounces back, and it poofs up. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. A skirt might be... Mm, might not be quite right. I just love this. I love this colour, though. I love this colour so much. So I, it'll have to be up here. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to definitely weave a top of that. So there's going to be lots of woven garments in my life. I just love spinning and weaving my own fabric. It's like, I'm just in love with these colours. I'm so excited. I'm so inspired to work with those. So that is <clears throat> what I, what else do I talk about? This is my very fancy card here. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, they are, those are all of my current projects that are on my list at the moment. Um, I have decided, I did, I looked at my budget. I looked back over my, my bank account, you know, and I was looking at, how much money I was actually really spending on yarn and yarn events and things like that. And it came to an astronomical amount. It's just not feasible. And what I do, I tend to do is I love the people and I love what they make and I want to support them. So I buy a skein. Now, in general, I can afford it. Um, I, you know, I pay my bills first and then I put a significant amount into savings and then whatever's left over is mine to spend. And it goes on coffee and yarn. <laughs> coffee, tea and yarn. And um, But we are looking into saving up for a camper van or for a house or, you know, just big things that everybody needs to save for. But really a camper van. Mm like a small little one, a T4 that I can adjust and then I can travel to shows in England and stay in the van. Oh my God, it'll be amazing. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> that's my dream. Hopefully by next summer, we'll have a little a little van because I miss Lofi. If anyone, if anyone um, was following me back in uh, Australia, we had a little camper van that we'd bought um, that was converted into, it was just a, an old van a Mazda something or other and um, it was converted into a camper van and it was the best it just gave us such freedom to just take off down the road everything with us and uh, so we really want to get that again and it will just allow a lot of freedom to go traveling and maybe do some more shows in England uh, and Scotland and Wales because we could just hop on the ferry you know <sighs> So that's the dream. So I'm saving up for that. So I'm thinking <clears throat> I need to stop spending yarn, spending money on yarn at the moment until I go to events. I'm going to save up a little bit um, until my next kind of event, which will be the, um, what's it called? Barcelona, Barcelona Knit festival Barcelona Knits festival yes that's my next big festival that I'm going to um so yeah that's exciting uh, although um the gift yarn doesn't count so if James gets a hint that someone very special is making something very special doesn't count right <laughs> So yeah, I'm on a little bit of a stash. I mean, look at all this. <laughs> Someone, I showed my stash there, I can't remember when, and Nadia of the Cottage Notebook podcast was like, oh my God, I need to come down and sort out your stash. I was like, it is sorted. <laughs> it's sorted in my brain. Not really. I was looking through it and I was getting a lot of stash overwhelm, which was what my last podcast was kind of about. So yeah, I've decided I've got a lot of yarn and I don't need it. But I'm going to be doing a big de-stash now in, in January. I'm going to be really analysing all of the wool that I have and checking with my colours. And if I 
love them because I fell in love with them at the time but really they don't the, the colors don't suit me or if I love the base but really the color does not suit me um you know so that's what I'm going to be doing um a little bit of news on the shop I am going to be holding off on the shop update until Rhinebeck so in case you don't know, there is a online festival and it's called the Not at Ra Not at Rhine Not Everyone Goes to Rhinebeck Festival. And it is a international event, online event with lots of dyers, uh, project bag makers, stitch marker makers, lots of yarny uh, creative um, shops that are taking part who can't go to Rhinebeck. And we're going to be offering a load of really special, special, special items, uh, possibly some discounts. There's going to be pop-up discounts all the way through it. Follow the hash hashtag not at Rhinebeck um, and I I'll pop a few more hashtags here on screen. Um, there's also going to be, there's also a knit along for a jumper. I'm like, I don't think I'll have this one finished, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> whatever. I'm going to have a couple of hats finished. Uh, I'm going to be offering a couple of prizes for that knit along as well and uh, yeah so the shop is going to stay closed until the not at Rhinebeck event which is going to be uh, I think the 20th around the 20th of uh, October so keep an eye so the all the details that you can find are over on Ann Tudor's website uh, Ninja Chickens Maria of Ninja Chickens also talks about it quite a lot on her podcast and there's a lot of really good um, podcasters available um, talking about it I'm so excited but I've decided just to hold off on the on the yarn shop for just a minute I'm sorry if you if you've seen something somewhere and you desperately want it and you're waiting for my shop to open please do contact me and I can organize something but for the moment I I need to focus a little bit more on my job and on my retreat and on some and my family and my events um, I, uh, I can't do it all and something's got to give. So at the moment, I'm just having a little bit of a break from the shop and I'm going to open with a massive bang again eh, over a Rhinebeck weekend. So yay, that's the story. That's what I've decided to do with the shop. I think it's the best thing to do for me, my family, my sanity. So just to give me a little bit of a, a break. I've got a ton of undyed yarn here, some very special stuff from um, some very special mills. And I'm going to be dyeing up a few of those colorways for Rhinebeck, Spe or for not at Rhinebeck, for special autumn colorways for those who can't manage to get to the amazing Sheep and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck that happens in October every year. One day I'll get there, but not this year. <laughs> um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about a really, really brilliant project that's being run by uh, the Thistle Hollow. Um, and um, she is a podcaster who is doing an amazing project. She is looking for blanket squares for a project called the Sister Survivor Blanket Project. Um, and I'm going to pop that uh, proper hashtag. I don't know if I got it right or not, but anyway, I'm going to pop it down there. Um, so uh, Ninja Chickens, uh, Maria, my lovely friend, I love her so much. But um, I had talked about it a couple of times, uh, at least once anyway, in one of my podcasts a couple of months ago. And I really wanted to um, start on it again because I have been looking through all of my stash. And what she's looking for is little squares uh, for to put together into a big blanket to send away to the um, the the spokesperson uh, who came out to um, fight against a um, gymnastics coach. I think it was gymnastics. Oh, I can't remember now. Because oh, gymnastics or swimming coach who abused several dozen young girls and she has come out and she has stood up and she kind of instigated or was one of the instigators of the Me Too movement against um, abuse against women and children. So it's an incredible project and it's just really a lovely idea just to kind of stitch some some love and support um, to some horrible things that this woman has had to go through. And I'll put the full details down below in the down bar so you can uh, see what it actually means. And if you have time to knit a small little square, um, I'll give the full dimensions down below in the down bar as well, um, just to send off to uh, the Thistle Hollow podcast 
last and then she's going to stitch everything together and hopefully send it off to her and um, yeah so if you have time to read up and do a little square um doesn't take that much time really um I do understand though that lots of people have lots of things going on and, and Christmas is coming up and stuff but I was thinking if you did have just one evening to make a square that will that that would help out a lot in um putting together this beautiful blanket for a very strong powerful woman that needs a bit of love and support so um yeah so that is me today uh, yet, yet again, I have managed to talk for a long, long time. I don't know how I do it all the time. I'm skilled. Just saying. Oh my God. I got my pom-pom, by the way. Love it! Maybe I'll do like a proper look through of the pom-pom. Oh God, this one though. <gasps> this. I am obsessed with this jumper. Why is the shine? getting in my way oh my god look at this so it's got this honeycomb down the center what's this called Keradwin. and then it ripples out to the edge oh I love it it's like such a different modern take on it's by Fiona Alice it's just such a different take on like Aran sweater it's just it's a drop shoulder design that's beautiful beautiful love it um and then there's uh, there's some beautiful um uh, articles in there about um, Anna Maltz talks about aging and representation of older women of color and all different colors in the knitting world because all the a lot of the time we manage to see, you know, the young pretty things, which does seem to sell. So, but it's a I think it's a commentary on this incredible model who is a beautiful um, jewelry designer. In case you didn't know, let me just double check. It's right on the inside cover here. Yes, Diana Maynard, jeweler. I think she is on Instagram. And isn't she glorious? I mean, I'm starting to notice a few gray hairs popping in up here and I'm like, maybe this isn't such a bad thing. <laughs> you know, where is this chair sinking? Anyway, this is a stunning magazine. I absolutely love it. I am in love with this beautiful kind of scoop back neck as well. Wait, what's it called again? This is the Artemis. Oh, love it. I just, and I think it's just the glittery gold yarn, which I love as well. I love it. Um, and it's got this beautiful like boat neck and then a drop neck at the back. Just so elegant, you know? Really pretty, another drop shoulder design. And there's some mohair, which makes me, well, not, yeah. yeah. Ooh, these gloves are really cute, right? So they're kind of marled. So you hold the stitches together until you come to this part and you drop the dark one and you only, it's like a um, marlisle, I suppose, kind of. Yeah, is it by Anna? Animals? No, it's by Amy Phillip. Ah, okay, cool. So I really think they're adorable. <clears throat> so they're like really nice. I love it. And of course, extra. And I've seen a couple of these start coming up on Instagram. Oh my goodness, they're so pretty. Why does my chair keep dropping? Very annoying. <laughs> I love this one as well. This is called Sky Map and it's just a big long mohair um, lace tube. And then you do some embroidery. So I like, I would put all my favorite constellations in there. I'd put Orion, I'd put Gemini. I would pop some stars in there, some planets and the moon, you know? So it's like, it's like you knit a canvas and then you, you actually hold the tube in place with your embroidery stitches. I love it, love it. Not too fond of this moon bow thing. Not, not, not super, no. No, don't think so. Not for me. But, <clears throat> you know, three out of, actually five, five out of, how many patterns in this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten? Ten? Wow. Oh, what are those mittens? Oh, hat and mitten set. I miss those. So 10 patterns. 
they're cute. Oh, look at this brioche jumper put over. That's nice. So nice. So I think it would make one, two, three, four, five, five, maybe six, maybe this. I really do like this actually. Maybe six out of 10 of these patterns. Good value, I think. 12.50 for 10 patterns and you get some beautiful, I just sat down with a cup of tea one day and I just had such a chill. Oh, also they show you how to like make moon garlands. And um, a moon, moon set pancake. Love it. Thank you so much, Pom Pom ladies. It's gorgeous. I'm really low now, so I'm going to go before I drop through the floor. This chair is the most ridiculous. <sighs> so thank you so much for watching. If you fancy, if you did like the podcast, do give me a thumbs up. It helps other people find the podcast. And um, if you really want to keep an eye on me and find out what I'm doing on the events I go to and any vlogs that I put up, um, you can pop down you can click the subscribe button I think you have to be on either I can't remember what it is but it has to be like the updated version of the app if you want to click on the little it, there might be a little bell next to the subscribe button if you want to be notified you'll get like a little notification on your phone or an email um, to say that I've popped up a video just so you don't miss anything um, because I know I have a lot in my subscribe subscribe to a lot of things at the moment but I, I have a few maybe five things that I really subscribe to and I really want to see so if I mean if I am one of those people thank you so much by the way that's like a real honor but if you want to be um, notified you can just tap that bell and I'll pop up on your feed and be like hey guys not not with that noise don't worry it's a lot more subtle and, and elegant like me also I love this curl here happening I had my hair in plaits yesterday that's so thinking about henna dying. I've never dyed my hair, I'm scared. Anyway, let's not go into that. I love you lots. Mind yourselves, mind everyone around you. Be good, be seen. And and knit away, crochet away, spin away, weave away, whatever you want. If you have any questions, pop them down below in the comments or send me a DM or I've been asking any threading thread on my Ravelry as well. So thank you so much. Bye guys, see you next week. <laughs>